Hi, I'm Crystal, an art educator here at the Red Deer Museum and Gallery, and my guest today is Lynn. And today we are going to be doing, I would called it colorful circles with colored pencils, trying to get some alliteration in there. However, we're just doing some circles on some gray paper um, with some pencil crayons. So what we want is a gray piece of paper cut into a square, uh, a ruler, uh, the eraser, some pencil crayons, ideally with white and uh, gray, or sorry, not gray, white and different colors, but the white will show up really nicely on this. I had grabbed uh, two different circles and my pencil sharpener. Okay, so we will want to, and then Lynn, you can do this as well now because I think you're good, okay. is... It doesn't have to be perfect, but if you want to kind of draw, uh, I can't find the words, across in the center of our paper. And I believe the ones we have, and I do have a pencil here somewhere, are should be eight by eight inch. So if we do four inches, like just put a tick mark at the four inch mark. You know what? And I grabbed a ruler that's not in inches. I've got, I've got centimeters and millimeters. <laughs> Twenty. So okay. I, yeah. So we can just say ten. Ten. Okay. So if you grabbed, if you have a ruler that does not have inches, we just want to go approximately in the middle, so that we can get a um, a cross. Just because it's easiest if we can start in the center. So should I draw really lightly? Yeah. With my pencil? Yes, Lynn. Lynn asked if she should draw really lightly <clears throat> and one of the things that I did recommend in the materials is that you get an H uh, pencil and we had talked about that before but the H's is, is kind of a harder it's it's a the graphite in the pencil is not as um, is not as dark you have to press really hard to make it dark so whenever you're drawing and you don't want your um, and you want your image to be lighter or you want to erase, it's really good to use an H pencil. Okay, so I got mine. Now, so we should be able to see that we have, just checking to see if, yes, I got a cross, it's like four quadrants that should be equal. Now I'm gonna take my uh, largest circle, but you can start with your smallest circle, it doesn't really matter. And you can just approximately put it in the center of your page. You don't need it to be perfect. Those of you who want it to be a little bit more centered, go ahead and you can make some ticks around like with your ruler, but it doesn't have to be right in the center. And I'm going to use white. I think I'm gonna start with white you don't need to use a pencil we're going to go right in with a pencil crayon going around our circle okay and then yes you can see that very well in there you can see my white circle on here did your white circle work out lynn it did although okay. i realized i thought i was measuring it <laughs> that is okay. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this, uh, my circle. I do have, actually, you know what, since it comes right off the page this time, I'll use my smaller circle and I'm going to go to the center, the center mark. And I'm going to try to, once again, approximately make it in the center. And I'm going to use my white again, I think. You don't have to, you can start using other colors. I Are you just making a bigger circle around your little one because my circle did the same size. Well, you know what, Lynn? Look. Oh, okay. Thank <laughs> So I just pointed out to Lynn and anybody else if you don't have because I tried to find another one of these to give to her, I couldn't. However, this circle is bigger than this, so she can just flip it and use that side. Yeah, but if you wanted to make a circle inside the circle, you could do that too. So what are we doing now? We're doing, uh, I see we can just do whatever. Yeah. Oh, I see you're going from the center to the bigger circle. I am going in the center out. 
and I'm just, I'm gonna find a bigger circle. <laughs> Sorry, I could not find one or one like this. They just get a lot. Hey, no. Okay, so I went all the way around now. You can see how I've got more circles. You know, and I think, cause I want them to be even bigger, like around, I'm gonna do that again from the center, but with my bigger circle and I'm gonna pick a different color. I think I'm gonna go with uh, my favorite color, purple. Everybody I find has this tendency when they're doodling, they doodle, it's almost the same thing. Like if you doodle circles or squiggles or straight lines or squares or dots. I don't, Lynn, what do you doodle? I probably doodle squiggles. Yeah. Much more of a gestural type thing. Something organic. I am also the organic. So organic is um, not straight lines. So it's your more curvy, um, what you'd find outside, like leaves, um, anything that you would find man-made inside here, like our ruler. This would be um, more of the... Um, inorganic geometric shapes but yes i tend to do that too i tend to um more circular for me when i doodle i just realized now crystal that i can just go to town with whatever circle design i want yes I the, the starting point. absolutely so you can make as many circles or as few circles as you want the reason i was bringing up um what happens when you doodle is because it's kind of the same once you get going once you get some circles on here it really becomes quite almost meditative so we're gonna we're gonna shade a bit and we will add some dots and you can doodle what i had done with this project but by no means has to be repeated is um i was trying to make things uh balanced um symmetric so right now I am making circles. If I make a circle here, I'm making the same size circle over here, here and here. So I'm making everything symmetric. So that means that they're e even all the way around. Um, and when I start actually coloring with some dots, circles and whatnot, I will also do that. Okay, so I am pleased with what's going on. I think I'm going to do just a little bit more circles, but this time I'm going to take my smaller one and I'm going to put it up into the corner, each corner, and draw a circle. I have to say, Crystal, I like the fact that we have different size circles because that adds an interesting um, unity. The circle creates unity, but the variety of sizes creates a variety in our composition. Yes, it does. see how this is meditative, yeah. which I clearly need today. <laughs> <laughs> I know I was trying, I'm like, okay, I'm like, somebody has got to be able to make some art with me. It's really fun. It doesn't take a lot of brain power, which sometimes it's nice just to be able to zone out a little bit and you're sometimes when you think you at least have the time to zone out, that's probably when you need it the most. Yes. I, Lynn was like, oh, how long is it going to take? I'm like, about 15 minutes. So it should be, I figured it would be okay. So the sad part is whether or not you're going to want to go back to work. Hey. And, you know, I'm, uh, I'm going to put one more smaller one right in the center and then I'm going to start. Okay. 
So I had mentioned that, and you by no means need to do that. Um, if you want things to be symmetric, when you start shading or adding dots or see, this is one of the finished examples. Uh, I'm going to try to do the same thing. Whatever I do here, it's going to be here, same here and same here so that I can have that symmetry. And I'm just going to pause and take a sip. Okay. okay so I'm going to, um, well, let's take an orange. So I'm going to come into this line here and I think I'm going to start by doing uh, just sort of like dots, but I'm not just dotting it, just kind of making a slightly larger circle. And then I'm going to do that on all of these right up to this point. Uh, just anywhere around wherever. I, yeah, I started from the center okay. and I'm just, um, starting to make a pattern. Okay. So more circles. Just a tiny bit. More circles, yeah. <laughs> See, like I said, I, I tend to doodle in the circular, so. So I um, I got my vaccine yesterday. I'm going today. Are you? Yes. yes, my arm is slightly sore, but other than that, I feel pretty good. Uh, you can get in. Yeah. And I called and she said, well, she was a little hesitant, but I said, am I in the category and opens up for me tomorrow? She said, well, let's push you tomorrow. And it was super easy. Awesome. So that was nice. All right. So you can see how I, I started putting these uh, circles here. I might continue on, do I want to do more of a pattern? See, this is where you can start playing around with how you are, are you going to shade some or are you going to put more circles or are you going to put loop-de-loops or do you want to put lines, basically anything you want. Um, in these circles, it's just if you want to have that symmetry, that kind of, pattern look, then you just want to make sure you do the same everywhere. I realize my, my symmetry is completely off, but that's okay. Mine will be, mine will be a much more um, asymmetrical type thing, so I might have to play with that. And, and, and yeah, and that works too. Okay, so I'm going to do this here. They almost, if you do lots of symmetry, then they do have more of that mandala effect or look to them. However, they don't need to at all. I just, um, I like playing with lighter colors on gray paper. Just because of the contrast. Yes, yeah. Sometimes it's just nice to, to do something a little different. that I like about pencil crayons is they're so, they can be so uh, meditative in themselves because yeah. they're so light and you need a soft touch. And I, I like the blending qualities that you can get from it, like blending a couple colors. I think some people forget that with pencil crayons you can blend, you can mix colors. We think that mixing colors is really something that's safe for painting, but 
pencil crayons get some lovely shade when you start to blend? I, um, when Gunner was smaller, I started playing around with um, pencil crayons and I wanted to start doing drawings of, of Gunner as a baby in pencil crayons. And I had so much fun trying to get the different skin tones and blending and yeah, pencil crayons can be fantastic to use as a medium all on their own. So in spots where my pencil went outside of the line of the circle, I find that's a great opportunity to do some shading if you want to hide those kinds of little errors and mistakes. So sometimes when mistakes happen, you just have to come up with a creative solution on how to, how to hide it, how to change it, how to fix it. Quite often we think when we make a mistake in our beginning, oh no, we have to start over. No, it just means that you have to apply a little bit of creative problem solving to figure out how you can fix that. Yeah. Okay, so you guys can see that I have something in the middle going on here, and now I'm going to start moving out. And I'm working backwards. I'm starting on the outside. Not in order. <laughs> Not in defiance. It's just I just work in whatever whatever is drawing me or calling me to work on it. That See way. and and that is one. I that is will be one of the fun things about having uh, guests on our live art Tuesdays is because we all work differently, and that's what makes things interesting. We have, Lynn and I have chatted about that more recently because I am a little bit more um, structured. And uh, I don't see squirrels quite as often. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's good. It's good to have the different types of people uh, working together because then you get different ideas, ways of doing things that I wouldn't have thought or... Supposedly symmetrical design, which has become a little bit more asymmetrical. Uh, figure out some solutions around that. I'll get there. See, Lynn and I are both starting to like get into the groove of things and our conversation oh, no. <laughs> is stalling. In the art world, we always oh. say that time seems to slip, about the way, uh, slip by really quickly. Three hours can go by in like five minutes because we really do get into that groove. That is... I guess that's just the meditative quality that we're after today. Yeah. Okay, so I put more dots in here. I'm also now, I'm going to, just to kind of break it up a little bit more. I am, I, I don't know what the heck you call this. I'm just kind of and down and around some of these circles just to add some more interest. You know, and by no means do you need to have um, gray paper for this. 
white paper would be just fine. You can also do this with, um, with black paper too. And then your light colors would show up really well on your black paper. And then you can fill up your page as much as you want or as little as you want. Um, you can also too, uh, well, and it's your art at the end of the day, so it doesn't really matter. I do have, an, I do have an eraser if I do want to get rid of some of these pencil lines. Um, I'm not going to do that much, but I might do that for the odd spot. And I think I might shade a little bit more. And then since we've been working on this for 20 ish minutes, um, I'll talk about next week's project and then we can kind of wrap it up. <laughs> I have to stop. You can continue to work <laughs> and then we can take a picture and we can post it afterwards and be like, this is Lynn's finished project. Well, I don't know if I'll get there today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can see how you can start on something and it can take quite a while because you can go back into it and yeah. Okay, so here is my um, the one that I'm going to finish off for right now, but you can, I can, you can continue on and, and keep filling this up more and more and more. So if we look at the one example I had, you can see where I shaded a bit more. Um, I had thicker lines. Uh, I kind of stayed with the kind of curly cues that I'm a fan of, but that's my own sensibilities. And so you don't need to anyway. So yeah, carry on with pencil crayons and have lots of fun. So now for next week's project, we have this uh, foil, or <laughs> uh, we're called it foil fish. So basically, you're going to want watercolor paper, some tin foil, and this really neat texture that we have on the uh, the fish came from embossing with uh, um, produce bags. So if you have like an onion bag or potato bag, anything that has that kind of um, see-through texture netting there we go that's what i'm looking for that's what we want and permanent markers however we will post this uh, up on the blog and then you can also view today's project and all the directions on the blog uh, we also are on facebook instagram twitter so yes you can find us on all the social media hashtags so yeah here is our fantastic project. I hope you guys had some fun and learned a lot. And we will see you next week with our foil fish project. Okay. Bye.